I have no idea what Bert is doing tonight. <laughs> not usually reject pictures at uh, our um not like thousands of pixels wide. Speaking of which, let me see if uh let me test something real quick to see if um if um there's any logic behind what Bert is doing right now. Uh, well, I could relink one of these that I always showed in another one. For the streams, but I'm going to try uploading this one instead. Which I haven't posted anywhere yet, so let's see, is this going to show up? That does show up. Why does that show up? Also, it's not very visible when it's small like that, but that's not a good picture to look at. Once you actually zoom in, that's another uh, deep dreamer thing. They have like... Three or four uh, deep dreamer pictures, and then a bunch of the ones I tried out, and they always uh, returned. A failed thing. But the weird thing is sometimes they just have black text on, or white text on a black background that says your image failed to dream. But I think one time they gave me a slight variation of that. Also, I see a melodious escape. Perfect uh, image. Oh, Battle Block Theater. I have that actually, I haven't played that much of it, but I liked what I played of it. Also, did I leave Shuffle on? I sure did. Well, speaking of Doctor Who, I guess. Whoops. This is Doctor Who music, and... Also, uh... Oh boy. What difficulty is that? <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I think a little bit of time what happens to, um... To me, when I play uh, Escape, is that when I haven't slept for a while or um, I'm mildly tired, I, my arms get stiff or uh, in pain very quickly when I play that. Which basically means that it's a good thing to play, I guess, when you're not feeling very tired but you want to go to bed soon. Because it does tire you out if you do it for uh, in high difficulty for any real period of time. Also, I turned off shuffle right as the fucking playlist went. Jumped right to the last song, that's great. That's never happened to me before, though. Oh boy. Well, before I begin, I guess I could mention that... Okay, that's a bit loud. I went to the pneumologist today because my chest was feeling kind of uh, stiff and congested and not good. And it turns out that I have an inflammation again, which means that it's not that um, it's not that impactful. I can still do shit normally, mostly. I can't go out in the cold or uh, eat cold stuff or anything like that. But at least that explains why. My throat and my chest feel congested a lot of the time, and now I have to use... Oh yeah, that thing's still there even though it's not plugged in anymore. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> but yeah, now I have to use this. This, in case you don't know what it is, is an inhaler. Which, I've never used one of these, but apparently the doctor has the idea that... I might have like a very very slight case of like asthmatic sim I don't know is there a word for symptoms that isn't symptoms oh well so the way it works is you need to hold a thing and twist it to prepare a spray and then press the button on the side and then it sprays out I actually need to use it right now because uh, to use it twice every four hours for a few days and it's been four hours since I used it uh, but well it tells the instructions on the bottle by the way 
Uh, when you take them out of the box, they look like this. But then you expand them. And they look like this. So pretty detailed stuff. And uh, they tell you to test it a couple of times before you actually use it. And when you spray it, it looks like this. You can see a very faint mist come out of it. And just based on that fact, I probably would have abused the hell out of this thing if I had it as a kid. And wasted like a hundred charges on inane stuff just to see the spray. Well, it's very faint, it's a lot more visible in, you know, physical land. Also, I went right to the end of the playlist again. Hooray. Let me go back here. Well, you kind of need to because uh, it has a bottle inside that has the actual medicine. You can kind of see that on the bottom there through the um, the clear plastic thing. And when you first get this thing out of the box, it's not in there. You need to insert it yourself. So you need to figure out how to open this thing and the correct procedure for everything. And also, I never actually realized that you need to twist this thing in order, in order to, you know, prepare it for it. Oh, shoot. I just accidentally made it go off again when I didn't mean to. That's great. I should probably use it. But, well, with a device like this, it's like... Uh, I can pretend I have a sonic screwdriver now, by the way. And this is the reason why I mentioned Doctor Who before. This is the Sonic Screwdriver in the Classic series. Hey, I fixed a mild inconvenience because the writer was feeling a bit lately. A bit lazy, I'm sorry. And uh, this is the Sonic Screwdriver in the new series. I just fixed the universe. So I'm sorry about that. I'm very sorry about that, but it occurred to me. Also, I haven't actually used this thing again. Did I twist it again? I probably did, but I'm gonna do it one more time just in case I say yes. No, I don't need to twist it again. So, the way this works is I need to. Oh boy, that's home uh, improvement manual, isn't it? To have this spray while I'm inhaling and then hold it in my lungs for like 5 seconds and then, oops, I just accidentally struck the microphone, that's great. And then wash it down with some water or whatever because it's actually not a good idea to just uh, do this and leave remnants of the medicine in your uh, any part of your body that isn't exclusively connected to the respiratory system because that can cause problems. So. So let me see. You can imagine that you see that you can see what's going on. Well, that was number one. But I need to do it twice, so time for number two. After that, 10 plus minutes of uh, completely unrelated things to the stream that I did just because. I'm actually kind of curious how uh, I should turn this down. <laughs> how this is gonna sound in the playback because. Look, even when I turn it down, it's too loud. There we go, that's more bearable. I actually had to go on a little hunt to figure out how to get that 
song to distort the way I wanted. But I figured it out. And actually the first audio track that I tested that with was with um, the DSP Kajima World Order song. So that was pleasant to listen to. But yeah, but who uses dramatic music way too much, way too often. And now that I finally open this, let me see if I can prepare myself for the coming of the inevitable change your content by yourself uh, person. Which I'm sure is on the way, oh boy, guess what else I haven't done. But I'm gonna do right now because I could use a trumpet fight background thing again, but I don't feel like it, so... I don't know, world map. That couldn't work. Ma... apostrophe P, oh boy. The joys of Latin American keyboards. Where are the... actually, does it? Is it the same key? I don't think it is, no, no. The accent and the apostrophe are very similar, but they are not the same. Alright. This one looks appropriate, but I think it's a bit too large, but... Now never mind, it's apparently the, um, the correct resolution. If you just cobble everything together... Apparently the world map of Link's Awakening will end up as being 2560 pixels by 2048 pixels. Uh, I guess tall. The first number was white, but I forgot to say that. So now I need to import this and put it right there. And figure out which of these images is the one I want to replace. It's not this one, is it? It's the one below it. <coughs> yeah, that's just a nightmare. That's that's the one I want. World map, here we go. Okay, now I need to... Uh, fit the screen there. And make it a bit larger, there we go. That looks good, right? Well, we can pretend that it does. Because that's the one I'm gonna be using. Oh. Also, I clicked on the Fallen London thing again that someone posted on the forums. Because I used to play that thing a long time ago, but I kind of got this illusion, and uh, oh boy, that's a bit louder than I was expecting. I kind of stopped playing that a while ago because. And I got kind of bored with it after a while, and I didn't, wasn't a very big fan of the whole uh, have to wait X amount of time to continue the story if you run out of of uh, story money, I guess. That lets you do things. Also, I see it, there's apparently a caveman in the chat. And, uh, well, now that the game's actually started and I have everything ready, let me see. Well, the last, uh, when we last saw this, I had just come to level 4, like, I guess make us now. Oh yeah, I forgot. So let's scout this place. I think it's uh, mostly one of the easier dungeons, or at least uh, it has one of the easier bosses in this game. Actually, probably the easiest one. I'm trying to remember, uh, I don't know, maybe the, the boss of Dungeon 6 might be one of the... another contender for that, but... Well, generally speaking, I think the dungeon of this boss is pretty easy. Or the boss of this dungeon, why am I flipping things around? God, the compass has a new feature. It's kind of annoying that it tells you that every time you find one, even if you found, like, 20 compasses before now. Also, uh, you might notice that there's an obstacle in this dungeon that we'll be talking about, namely... Deep water. And if stuff falls in there, it will be lost. But we need to deal with that. Hmm. 
like this one square of uh, deep water, I guess we can just jump over it. But we shouldn't go this way yet, because we don't have the key needed to go into the, the door that's at the end of this, rope, this route. I don't know. Also, if I recall, we should be able to... Oh boy. To... Complete the trading sequence after this dungeon, if we want to. Which I can do, because we get a very useful item. By doing so. Okay. <laughs> well, not a, lot of, not a lot of options right now. Is this the key we want, or is this something else? Nope, it's a stone beak. You know, according to the Zelda wiki, you need to get all of those to get 100%. I don't know about that. More of a technicality than anything. Alright, why do I get the feeling that this is one of those cases where getting the map is going to be necessary for uh, progress? Or maybe I just didn't realize that, you know, we had to do this because we have the means to get over the three blocks wide holes now. Also, I'm still really glad that I got the bomb upgrade first. I'm glad that the P-hat down there is not moving anywhere, where it's annoying. Alright, we got another key, which means we could backtrack and open the other uh, block door that we saw that we couldn't open. Or we could keep exploring. Apparently we're about to come to our dead end, so I think it's gonna be better to keep going. Yep, it seems that this was a better choice after all. That's your witch, I think. You don't need to tell me that every time, game. I have a superior memory than that of a goldfish, I would like to think. But if I was wrong, how would I know? Thus is my argument defeated. Alright. Yeah, I did. I don't remember that. And it is also a reason why you can't uh, get rid of some uh, distant obstacles by throwing a bomb and having it explode in mid-air because they don't do that in this game. So I guess that's where we're supposed to go now. Right after dealing with the turtles that respawn for some reason. That's the annoying part about the little gels uh, or souls, I guess. And so far, I call the slime monsters that get defeated after one hit are uh, called gels, and the ones that get split into two smaller versions of themselves are called souls. And that's how you tell them apart. Oh boy. Also, I'm kind of surprised, pleasantly so, that we haven't found any of the uh, spawned any acorns or triangle power pieces yet. Because while those can be useful, I do get annoyed by the way they change the music, as I've mentioned many times. Yep, well, there's one of them. Speak of the devil. What if I leave the room and come back? Yeah, they can be useful, but like I said, I'd like the non-changed music. In fact, they kind of uh, piss me off in the Dream Shrine, because I really like the Dream Shrine music. And pretty much every time I went there, I got one of those things. And from killing the arm mimics. Which meant nothing. Alright, oh boy. I'm failing to react to things that I'm seeing here also. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm pretty sure those bouncing 2D things can be killed. I only have a choice here, I think. Do we open that door with... Actually, never mind, we don't seem to have a key to open that door. 
Do we keep going this way or do we go down the stairs? I think we should be. Well, I guess we needed to do that first, I think, right? We just saw a key fall down. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, you can trick the turtles into going to, into the deep water and that kills him, I guess. That's neat. There we go. A glint of the tile will be our guide. Also, I'm better sure there's uh, some sequence breaking you can pull off in this dungeon that can make it unwinnable because you screw yourself out of getting things in a certain order and so. Uh, That thing. I'm guessing we can't get it yet though because yeah, deep water. Never mind. We need to keep going the other way. And the enemies respawn, of course. Which I guess makes sense. I mean, like, you know, with uh, as difficult as these games can get, they're still less difficult than sell the souls, we all remember that, because unlike that game, in this game, you don't need to leave the dungeon and come back for the, the hearts that you get from breaking the pots and such to respawn. But at least even in that game you can always keep getting more stuff from, uh, from, well there goes that thing. You don't even have to pretend to that, uh, or make up an excuse to get away from it that time. But in both of these games, at least, if you keep killing enemies, you keep getting stuff all the time. You never stop getting stuff uh, from doing that. Oh boy, I don't think this can end well. I was trying to charge up the, um, oh there we go. Spin attack there. Didn't quite work. Oh boy. Fake treasure chest. You should know better than to expect freebies at this point in the game. Hmm. Well, the boss is nearby, but we can't really get there. Oh boy, the glint of the tiles will be our guide. I'm pretty sure that was a key, like a clue for this room. Sure, this is a trial and error uh, sequential kind of thing. Oops. And overshooting by accident and losing half heart or such kind of deal too. Alright, never mind. We can't solve this yet because we don't have the clue. But we get a small key at least. Explore the one passage that I thought we hadn't explored yet, but never mind. There's one more way open to us now that we have that key. I forgot about that, but we need to backtrack now a bit. So yeah, this, uh, this dungeon seems kind of uh, great, but... Then at least the theme for the next one will be cool, if I remember correctly. Oh wait, there's another one of those. Well, I guess I'll get it. To change it up a bit. At least you can ignore it. Oh boy, it's... Uh, never mind, it's the mini-boss theme. Or this thing that pretty much just goes around the room and ramps into you, or twice to. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to hurt it right now, but I'm guessing the, yep, the piece of power helps. I think you're supposed to uh, maybe jump over it and hit it from behind, but we didn't have to because we have a uh, power of sword right now. Well, let's grab this thing and open up the blocks so that we can pass. That is the puzzle here. At least we can one shot the souls here. Yeah. And by beating the boss, we got the flippers, which lets us swim in deep water and dive underwater, which means we can get an extra key now from. Oh boy. 
Well, it's time for that clue to actually have some meaning. Also, uh, I think this is the first appearance of these things in this game. The Helmosaurus or Hip Loops or whatever you call them. Okay, top left, bottom right, middle... Bottom left, top right. Need to remember that for the other room that looks like this. Well, we could go straight to that room. We do have a shortcut now in the form of the... In the form of the the water pool that we couldn't cross before. But let's go ahead and get this first, since I'm pretty sure we would have to at some point anyway. Tell him to tell you at least was as uh, grating as some of the enemies in this game can be. There are some enemies in the Oracle games, so we need to remember the secret. It was top right. Oh yeah, we, need, we can actually swim now, so we... Alright, there we go. Top left, bottom right, middle, bottom left and top right. And that opens up a special passageway, which I don't know. Do we want to go here yet? I guess we'll find out. Swamps, which I don't really have a presence that's very well explained in this spot. This will not be the last appearance in a Zelda game. No way. And for doing that we get the boss key. So I guess we did need to do that first. So are there any treasure chests left? There sure are. I should probably get those. Oh shit. But, uh, well, there's a nightmare uh, room that we can't reach yet because we need to go through the passageway. Also, I don't think we've been this way yet. I guess this is how we get to the nightmare's uh, room. But I see a chest to the right of me that I would like to get. And your hello, Lander. This is super highlight with... Uh... I guess... I don't know what other games do I know that are like this. That aren't solo games. So this is actually a, that obscure, unauthorized... Why hasn't the piece of power run out yet? How long has it been? If I tell this is that unauthorized uh, version of... this one that somehow got ported from the Sega Master System over to... to the Game Boy. You know what, I'll get that treasure chest later, I'm sure. Oh, there we go, it ran out. And there are cheap ships in this game too. Another uh, Mario cameo. And we can jump and make our way towards surface while swimming, which might not be such a good idea if you're trying to go further rather than upward. So that was quick, wasn't it? So let's see who the boss of this place is, even though I already know. I'm guessing these things have, or at least one of these, yep, has a heart, because you can't leave that to prepare for, uh, for this, I say, as I create a safe state, because I'm avoiding death at all costs, as I mentioned. And here's a boss. Food. So what do you do? Do you just keep slashing it like this? And, uh, well, there's other fish that you can kind of uh, see passing by, but they don't really pose a threat unless you get too close. And this guy just moves up and down, I guess, until it charges at you, but by then it's too late. So after that jarring trial, we can get the fourth instrument of the sirens. The Surf Harp. So, Ulrich the Caveman, why are you saying please in, in German? Wait, that's bite. Never mind. Hmm. 
Also something about the bay. Also, uh, we got out of the dungeon. We can go to wherever we want now, I think. Well, almost. I think there's gonna be one more pressing task that'll uh, present itself to us before too long, actually, before uh, we do anything else. I think it would be a good idea to go left. Oh yeah, we can dive by pressing B. We haven't really tried that yet. Not only if it's a um, top-down thing, aside from it purely 2D things. We can go in here, because if we do go in here, we find these fish. Manbo, child of the sun fish. It does look like a sunfish. Well, we do have an ocarina. So we can learn Manbo's song. Can you figure out what kind of song it is? Just learned Mambo's Mambo. I wonder who saw that one coming. And we can have the play it while out of the water, apparently. Oops, can we talk to the fish again? No, we cannot. We can just hang around them and possibly annoy them. So that was an interesting experience. <coughs> and the reason why I wanted to do that first will surely become apparent at some point. I don't know if there's much of a point to swimming around um, around this area, if we'll eventually get anywhere. Can we go into the waterfalls? I wouldn't expect that we could. <laughs> Child can find this place, I guess. Uh, it seems to be pretty empty. Will we find something if we dive into every spot of this uh, room? Because sometimes we do find stuff that way. How about the very middle? Nope. Oh, never mind. We found a piece of heart. So I guess that was the point of this room. Oh, you did the color dungeon first. I'm probably not gonna do that though after... Uh, actually, wait a minute. What do you need? To, uh, do the color dungeon, I don't remember. I know that you need, like, directions uh, to find the entrance. But I don't remember where you get those. I could probably look it up. Oh, well, there's another one of those. Yeah, I know where it is, but you also need, like, figure out a path between the graves to actually, or, uh, or figure out a way to move the graves to eventually make the entrance appear. And I thought you needed the magnifying glass to do that, I don't know. Also later lambda, yes. Actually, let me see, what uh, trading quest item do we have right now? We have the hibiscus flower that we got from the guy on the mountains. And there was one character that wanted a flower like this. So let's see if we can teleport. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Also, that just happened. I'm wondering if we can see that okay with this frame rate. Well, now we can because... Well, now you can. So something just appeared. Spooks. What if we try going to a house? Well, no problem, but the spooks are with us. And the bear still still wants to open a branch in my village, I guess. Hope he's doing alright with that honeycomb we brought him. So what? Oh, here we go, this is the house I was looking for. Because this is where that letter writing goat lives, and if we bring her a hibiscus. She will give us a request. What happens if we say no? Well, we already took our flower, I mean. 
level up, she gives her request again, but... But we can take one of our letters to a Mr. Wright who lives on the border of the mysterious forest. We've already met him. We traded a flower for a letter. And sometimes she can't help eating a delicious piece of paper. Get it because she's a goat. And apparently goats eat paper. Oh yeah, the spooks are still with us even during the recital there. Well, if it's too late to do stuff with the girl at this point, I mean, we lose her permanently when... when we wake up the walrus. Also, apparently the spooks want to go to the house at the base, so maybe we should oblige, actually. Where are we right now? We're there. We can go to the next dungeon. Or we can reach the entrance. I don't know if... I don't think we can um, enter it yet. So let's uh, take teleport again. After we align ourselves successfully. And this way we can go to the village. Or at least I hope we can. I'm pretty sure the thing about the ghost is that it prevents you from going to certain places. Well, the bow is still very expensive, but I do want to buy it with the uh, legitimate way. Because we've seen what happens if uh, we don't buy the legitimate way. Which is something we're gonna have to do eventually anyway, because, well, a reason. So we pretty much can't uh, go anywhere near the shop until we're ready to end everything. Well, let me see. Since we're gonna be going near the graveyard soon anyway, let's. Ram into the shelf to smash that book off, and let's see what it says. New world of color under the five gravestones. Alright, let me take a screenshot of this. Try with all your might. Open a new path. Whoever is worthy receives power of color. I wonder what the world of color is. Well, we'll find out. First, let's see if we can get rid of this spook. I'm moving quickly. So now I think that's alright, I mean. I haven't really... Uh, 12 dungeon wise, I don't think I'm gonna need any help. I mean, I've beaten this game like, I don't know how many times. Yep, well, this is the house by the bay, so let's go in and witness this scene. And that's the reason why that house had that music. So let's go to the cemetery next for a couple of tasks, one of which will be the color dungeon. Is it way over there? Yes, it's farther than I thought. I thought it was close to to the south, but I guess not. So boy, what's, what's oh, the caveman up to now? So you're gonna have to go a bit north anyway. I can also take this opportunity to deliver the letter to to the Mr. Right guy to further continue the trading sequence. Yeah, well, I mean, you might have seen me beat it. It's pretty.
pretty easy. Even when I played this game when I was like 7, I thought it was really easy. I'm guessing you have a piece of power then. Oh no, Dra tried to help his power and that red nail. I forgot about that. Which is kind of uh, what you get. One of the two things you can get actually for uh, clearing the next dungeon. But we will be checking out what first. Uh, well, I hope you don't mind, Mr. Ghost, but I want to do this first. Letter comes with a photograph. So let's see who wrote this letter. Wait a minute. Something doesn't seem right. All he has is this broom. It's alright, let's take the broom. It's better than nothing, right? Yeah, something's a bit off about that photo, wasn't it? I'm sure the guy won't mind. So let's see, where are we right now? I guess we should go east of the, the woods. So we'll get to the cemetery. Oh boy, I got the Guardian Acorn. I seem to always pick those up by accident on this screen, in particular. Well, I guess it could come in handy. So the haunted wasteland, or uh, just the wasteland, should be uh, close by. But the cemetery is right here, or at least part of it we're looking for. Is this grave? Because this is where the spook resides. There's a jar in his home. That we need to look in. But not before listening to the owl again. We must dive into the waters of Martha's Bay to enter the catfish's more. And can't, you know, say more things about the windfish. I have, um. One out of four right now, I guess, like. It's either 5 or 9 total, probably 5 though. Can't really check uh, overall how many though. Also, if we approach the grave again, we get this. <coughs> you want to know about that ghost? Well, I bet apparently he's happy thanks to us. Couldn't go into the house by himself, I guess we need to latch onto someone to revisit that place. I was very afraid, apparently. Even though I looked very smug when the picture was taken. Oh, well, maybe the photographer was very afraid. So, let's see. Now that we're here, we could... Uh, go and check out the graveyard. It should be just one screen over. And now let me go to the folder where those images are saved. And figure out which one it was. Uh, Link's Awakening. US. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. How many screens wide is the cemetery? Alright. It's four. I forgot how this puzzle works. But I'm gonna try to solve it on my own. Hang on. I should probably minimize this since the picture is kind of tiny. So it doesn't need to be that size. There we go. Wait a minute, I think we need to... I think it relates to the grapes on all of the screens, doesn't it? Also, this fucking guinea. 
Every time the ghosts that show up in the cemetery from Zelda 1 can be annoying. Hmm, well that would make sense. Oh yeah, tech is doing work, but I do I do remember uh, I did remember it being something like that, so and the fucking graves still spawn ghosts even though we're supposed to touch them. That's not very nice. Oh boy. And finally, let's avoid getting killed and join the ghosts. Oh, there we go. And this is how you enter this place, which, as I notice, has the music got from the dungeons from Zelda 1. So, so now that we're here, what do these guys have to say? Our colors are never the same. I'm red, he's blue. If he's red, I am blue. What color is my cloth? Well, I talked to the guy on the left, so blue. Don't tell anyone. We have the powder. If not, we must go back. Actually, do we have the powder? Do have the powder, in fact. No, I just um, told the other guy what his color is, so there's not much of a point in being an obstacle here. But yeah, this is the color dungeon, and she might have guessed this. The this dungeon did not exist in the original non-DX release of this game. For the Game Boy without color. So we can get more powder apparently just by lifting the pots in these rooms. And well, it does use up color to its biggest advantage. And it has a few unique enemies that you pretty much will not find at any other point in the franchise, I don't think. I'm pretty sure the point of this is to get made all the things in cover. But the compass, so now we can see where the chests and nightmare are hidden. And it has a new feature. I'm pretty sure the thing about these floors is that you have to be forced to jump on them whenever you cross them, and every time you do the uh, change color until they're red, and if you jump on a red one, they disappear, so you can create holes if you're not careful. Oh boy, this, this puzzle, I remember the jokes of this. You need to attack these guys and make them fall into the holes, or throw them into the holes, but you need to aim them just right. And of course, you need to match them to the right color, so you can't do this on one chrome, or at least not without getting lucky. Oh, you got the beak, oh boy. At least I think those colors reset every time we go into the room. Make all the red blue. Alright, I guess I will. I wish I could come up with something instantly that's associated with uh, red and blue. Well, I guess red could be communist. But Steve isn't here, so the joke would be lost. Partially. Just by that fact. Oh boy. Well, I'm pretty sure we only need powder for one of the two mini bosses I think there are in this dungeon. So I wish we could find more of the other stuff, like hearts mostly. I don't want to die. Oh boy. These fuckers are. Uh, they keep jumping and making things inaccessible. So you want to kill them as quickly as possible. Before they make everything disappear. Alright. Oh. Also, I kind of ignored that guy before, but I guess we can kill him too. I guess we don't need to deal with these guys though. Just walk by them. Alright, we call the red blue. Oh, blue. There we go. And it gives us the same clue. Well, I mean, I guess making all the red ones uh, a certain color would be pretty much impossible. Without incredible trial and error in the monochrome version, because it was possible to play this game, oh boy. I am no boy, time to get this guy's weakness spelled out. A pitiful sword is no match for me, so what do we do? But yeah, this game was, um, in fact, oh boy. 
Okay, I don't want to die, so I'm gonna start using save states. But yeah, this is why we need the powder. I only need to hit it three times, though, I guess. But this game was the DX version of it, that is, was in fact compatible with, uh, with non-color uh, Game Boys, which means that, oh boy, I screwed that up, didn't I? Yep, I sure did. Which means that, um, they had to come up with some special test to make sure that, uh, that you wouldn't get into the color dungeon with a monochrome Game Boy. Which is why they have those guardians at the start of the level. Yeah, I was already planning on getting the red clothes for that reason. Oh boy. I don't need to deal with you guys again. But here's the second mini boss. It's quite a greedy fool. Give up and go home, that's a real uh you really told me you oh boy. So uh did we just hit the sky or no? Oh, never mind, I guess we do. I forgot about that. Actually, this reminds me of a boss in... Uh... Second then Setsuke Final Fantasy Adventure. I think it's pretty much the same idea as this, and very similar gameplay too. Oh boy. I think my piece of power ran out, and that's not good. Oh boy. Also, I guess you need to get really lucky with the timing to hit this guy. you don't get a fairy for your troubles. I think this is one of these Zelda games with uh, the shortest max heart meters, by the way. Oh boy. Oh well, at least those guys are dead. I guess they weren't the key to getting through this room, though. Oh shit. No good. Okay, this guy needs some creative stuff to get through it, but not anymore now that we're over here, we can just do this. And there we are. There we are, I guess. Also, in case you haven't noticed, this is just a variation of, uh, you know, the puzzle where you change one of the things and then all the adjacent ones change as well. So I'm not doing very well at getting through it. Okay, what if I do this and then this? And, uh, just chip away at this very badly. No, that leads me back to the same place. Hang on. I can get this. Oops. What if I... No, that makes a sense. I'm assuming, but if I'm careful, I might end up in the same place, but maybe not in time. I swear I'm one off from solving this. One away. Every time. Alright, there we go. Pretty sure all that's left at this point though is the boss of the dungeon. It's really short even by this game's standards. Since it's kinda of supposed to be an extra anyway. So do we have the key we need? We do not have the key we need to get through that door. Uh, do we have a map? We do not have a map, but we do know that there's a chest to the right of here apparently that we totally missed. Because we ignored that door up there, didn't we? Yep, we sure did. Now the boss, oh boy, here we go. This is, uh, I'll have fun doing this one, I guess. If you were just using a monochrome Game Boy. Oh boy. And yeah, getting those guys to get in the 
slots can be tricky to push sometimes. But at least I... At least they stay there once you do that. There we go. And now we should have everything we need. So let's make our way back through here. And witness, oh boy. I thought we might have needed a projectile for that, but I guess not. Just do that. And here's the boss. And no one can seem to agree what this guy's name is, by the way, if you go to the wiki. His name is either Giant Hard Hat Beetle or Deepoon or Turtalfos. I don't think it has an official name, but yeah. In case you didn't figure out what um, what it said means, you need to strike it repeatedly. And uh, yes, I know. He interrupts you every so often. But what the uh, objective is... He needs to get it to red and that kills it, but... If you wait a while, he slowly goes back to blue. And if he goes back to blue... The whole fight resets and you have to listen to his spiel again. But we didn't have to deal with that. Also, now to check out our reward for beating the temple. Power of color is ours now. If you want defense, choose red. If you want defense, choose blue. Well, I'm pretty sure red will speed things up, so we'll go for that. Also, well, we can come back here to uh, switch our decision if we change our mind, but why would we? So that was a color dungeon. Now uh, have a permanent piece of power effect without the annoying loop, so that's a good thing. And uh, now we can carry on with the plot. Which in this instance, I guess, involves going back to the house, by the way. Like the ghost mansion, so we can get another reward from that. Also, we should probably try to get more magical powder soon, but... Oh yeah, we can't hurt those guys normally. Don't even really notice it giving me a speed boost. Hello. I don't see any reason why we can look under uh, the pots in the ghost's house before, but I guess not until his will spawned whatever was in there. So back down to the shores we go. Like everything half a world away. Seashell. How many of those do we have now? 13. Is that all? Yeah, I guess so. So I guess we didn't actually have to come here to advance a plot. But we will eventually get the level 2 sword if we get the seashell count up to 20. In the meantime, though, let's continue our quest. Because now that we can swim, or oh, speaking of secret seashells, I'm pretty sure I know what uh, the motivation for going over here is. Oh, let's not get hit by the fireballs that that Sora creates. I don't 
think we can get over there yet. Don't have any way to get rid of those things at a distance. But now there's a Merigold statue on one of those screens we've been passing. I should probably go back to Animal Village actually. Soon. Because, well, it's also there's the entrance to the next dungeon. Looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? But in the meantime... I do want to find out the trading sequence, so let's... What do we do with the broom that we've been given? Actually, I'm not sure if we need to do it here in this village, because the person... That we need to give it to, I thought, appeared in this village after a plot event, but I guess not. I need to go back to Marble Village. Which is a western one, which, which we can pass through before, but... I didn't realize we needed to... ...do stuff here. But if you might recall... ...the old woman who lives with, uh... Grandpa Olvira loves to sweep, but uh, she's not sweeping anymore. But since we bring her a new broom. We can have the fishing hook she found when she was shut up in the river like. What will the fishing hook become? Well, I don't know, but apparently... That old one really loves to sweep. Now let's continue by returning to the place where we would have normally gone. Also, actually, hang on a bit. There is one more place we could check out, I think. Before we proceed, actually, no, never mind. I think we need the item from the next dungeon to check out the place I was thinking of. But for now, let's go to the bay. This big kind of lake that's out here. Toy. If, uh, you know, there's any way we can actually dive into it. Well, we get that hint again. Secrets are like water when it comes to bridges. And there's a bridge right here. And all of the spots around it are blocked except for one. I wonder what that could mean. We would probably find out if I could get into the water. But we need to follow this path, I guess. And run away from the... The whirlpools that become... Fireballs. Because if we go near the bridge and dive... We find this screen. Which... Well, here's a fisherman from the village. And yes, we do have a fishing hook. He will give us his next catch if we let him have it. Actually, wait a minute. No way. It might be too late now, but... I think there's... Uh, actually, I'm not sure. If this next item is what I think it is... That's a big one. A bit of necklace. Oh well, it might still be able to do what I was thinking of. We got a necklace for a fishing hook. I guess that was a good deal. And he's gonna keep fishing, so you know what that means. We need to hang around here, I guess. Possibly. I'm pretty sure there's something we are supposed to trigger here, though. I'm not sure why we're not triggering it yet. I 
guess we could come back later because there is something else we can get on that screen, but it's not showing up yet. But uh, well, there's something else. A mermaid. Who had lost the necklace? But uh, actually, before we give her the necklace. I've already looked around here. Oh yeah. If you dive up, if you talk to her before you have the necklace, she tells you about how she lost it. And if you dive while you're next to her, she does that. And in the English version, she says she has already looked around here. But in another example of change, I'm pretty sure in the Japanese version she didn't lose her necklace. She lost something else, which basically means she's naked on the water, so if you dive next to her, she says something different. I'll leave you to ponder what that is, but they took that out of the English version. But for, uh, you can hear what she wants, we get the scale of the mermaid's tail. Yep, she did. I guess that was too risque for Western audiences, though. So there's something uh, else special that we can do with the mermaid scale. Apparently, an artist once asked her for um, a scale as well. I wonder if that could have anything to do with uh, the statue of the mermaid that's somewhere on the bay that I can't figure out where it is. Have we been to the screen to the south of this one yet? I think we might have. Hang on. I should probably have a look at that because I think. We might be able to complete the trading sequence now, but maybe I was wrong and we do need the item from the fifth dungeon as well. Oh shit. I always forget that those two things are fake. Oh, never mind, we do need the item. Oh boy. Should probably dig a bit so I can get hearts. Apparently I'm not as good at surviving in this game as I would like. Or I could just cut the grass, that also works. But anyway... Since we have the means to swim and dive, we should be able to enter the... the this dungeon right here, because there is a bit of the rock formation that surrounds it that doesn't look quite right. And it's this one right here. And if we dive here, we find the entrance. So this is level 5. The catfish is more, which at least has a bit more interesting music than the last dungeon. And also lots of uh, masked dinosaur uh, enemies, which can get annoying with their sudden erratic movements and refusal to let you hurt them. And uh, you'll notice that there are big distances. And we can't jump even with the Pegasus boots. But we will find a way before too long, don't you worry. First, let's get the compass, like always. It has a new feature. Oh boy. Do we really want that? We already have the red clothing, I mean. I think I'm just going to ignore that for now. Also, we get weights to jump through, which I'm pretty sure you need to use the feather for. Also, I. Well, the new feature that Compass has is forming a set. Oh boy. 
there seem to have just hidden in this room, but why well, you might ask, I have the feeling I know, because it does have the block puzzles like Zelda 1 does. So of course if we do that, we get the key. Oh yeah, this is um... This dungeon also has an interesting theme with the mini boss. Also, I forget, can we dig in the sand? We cannot. I guess that's hard in sand or something. <coughs> We're eventually going to fight something here, but uh, yeah, the mini boss of this dungeon is kind of interesting as well. I'm kind of wondering too when we're gonna find that guy for the first time. Yes, we need to kill these things again first if we want to leave the room. But now that we have the key, we can go through this door and further explore the place. Fine, this wonderful labyrinth of death. Also, is there any point in this room other than the floating bombs? I have the feeling there might not be. Oh, never mind. Well, why didn't the, the new feature tell me that was there? Yeah, I should probably go and pull up the wiki soon so I can figure out where we are. Oh, fuck. We can get arrows, I guess, even though we don't have the bow yet. Uh, but I should probably look at the wiki to tell me where the other uh, mud battery locations are. Well, I thought you could do that in rapid succession, but I guess not. Or maybe I just wasn't good enough. Let me see, actually. Let me save stage real quick and... I don't know, it seems kinda hard to believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do this until you have the item. So I'm just kind of uh, wasting time and life here. But at least we have the stone beak so we can figure out what the hint is for this one. Can't destroy a skeleton with your sword, try using a bomb. Oh boy, could that be a notch too? <coughs> the mini boss of this place, which I think was also a mini boss in, uh, in Link to the Past. Because we're gonna fight him for the first time. It's Master Stalfos. And the gimmick for this fight is that you need to hit him with your sword and then bomb him. Few times actually. And once you've done that, Ark, I can't beat you, I'm out of here. <coughs> Notice too how there is one block in the corner of this room. So he kind of gave up before we could kill him. And, um,. Uh, He's got what was inside of that box. And he does us to go and get it if we can. Master Stalfos, yes. I'm pretty sure actually he was also um, a mini boss in Link's uh, the past. Because they use that sprite of him as a mini boss in Zelda Souls. Well, I want to see what through this. Uh, oh boy. Using those cheap, cheap tricks again. Actually, wait. Or I guess it's like Mario 1, where uh, I'm pretty sure there's level where there were levels where the cheap chips could jump out of the water, but that meant that. I don't know, were, were they invincible in Mario 1? I think they were. At least in this game you can jump on them. This I'm pretty sure doesn't work on any other enemy except the Goombas. Oh boy. I really wish I had that item that you get for, uh, for 
finishing the training sequence right about now. Dive under where the ch where the torch light beams cross. Oh boy. Yep, I still wish that I had that item. Hmm. We don't have a key, do we? No, we don't. Well, speaking of Goombas, also I see this Bowser's head. Oh boy. You're supposed to give me life, not take it. So you might be wondering what purpose those Bowser heads serve, since they are not just there for decoration. I have the feeling we're not gonna be able to do anything in this direction yet. Call it a wild suspicion. Actually, wait a minute. Can we go back this way? Because, uh... Hmm... No, I guess not. I guess we have to move the blocks down there. I guess we have to move the blocks. Yep, there we go. And, uh, oh boy. Nope, I don't want to have the double power paradox. Because I find this music actually kind of interesting. So where did I want to go though? Well, I guess we need to go back this way because... This is where uh, one of the paths that we didn't finish exploring was. If we go up from this room, we can start exploring this series of uh, rooms. Oh boy. Oh boy. Also, well, the old statue said to dive. Where the torchlight beams cross, but I'm pretty sure a pool of water in the middle of an otherwise nondescript room would be pretty suspicious anyway. Also, we can vote. I guess if Mario had a sword, the underwater levels would have been a lot easier. But, no, he only had his fists and his drug habit. Oh boy, we can't even do this yet because we don't have the item. That's great. I guess I'll have to remember that that's the, per the point of this room. Because I'm probably going to need that chest. Anything on this side of the room? In fact, I cannot. I guess that's how we press the switch to unlock the right room, but before we go there, which we could get to by going down into that room. Let's see what lies this way, other than bombs, I guess. I'm guessing nothing, and we can't get that chest or the chest above us, I don't think. Actually, we might be able to get this if we time this just right. Yep, there we go. But we can't get that one, so... So much for that. There we go. Because the other uh, gaps are four blocks wide and we can only jump three blocks with the Pegasus boots. Oh shit. Well, that was rude of that guy to... Go in like that. I'm guessing the key to unlocking this room was to kill all the gels, oh boy. Well, there's three blocks in this room, which means i probably going to come back here. I'm definitely going to have to come back here after that. Oh boy. I've activated the 
3x power paradox, I guess. Let's see what good that'll do. Well, this is where we get the dungeon map. <coughs> so, this room has that going for it. So, we can see the size of this dungeon. It's kind of sizable. I guess that door is permanently open now, so let's go into the two uh, block room. Which of course means that this is where the second fight with this guy will be. Well, I mean, I don't think that's gonna make a lot of a difference in this fight since we hurt him not with the sword but with the bombs. Oh, never mind. We beat him in two hits this time. So back up we go. Because we already know where the third encounter room is. And just by virtue of that guy making you run all around, this dungeon is longer than most. But still not as long as the dungeons in the Oracle games. So where is the other gel? Because I would like that thing to show up. So I can open the door, and here we are. <coughs> Didn't have to go all around like the game probably wanted me to. Yep, apparently we're a real pesky kid, so... I have to deal with that. You know, maybe if you didn't pick such obvious hiding spots. Maybe if you didn't go to the rooms that have your face on the floor of them. And go two of them in the order of uh, determined by the number of blocks in them. It would be a bit more difficult to find you, but... But now we have to go to the quadro. Which is close, if I remember, to the entrance of the dungeon. So, time to backtrack again. That guy, uh seated into the cracks in the floor, which almost got turned into a hole by me standing on them too long. Oh well. Pretty sure the room we're looking for is this way. Of course. This way, but up, oh, yes. I am assuming, but I might be wrong. Actually. It might not be this way, but yep, it's not this way. I need to go this way first before I move left. And this is why it's not recommended to play solid 2D solid dungeons in more than one sitting, because you do need to remember the layout. Oh boy. Probably don't need to kill you guys anyway. So, do the weight puzzle again. There we are. I forgot that the orange skeletons actually throw stuff at you if you don't kill them quick enough. So this guy says uh, intimidating a server. Oh boy. How is he connecting this time? So this time he will not back down. So we need to finish him off for good. And we finally get what he's been keeping from us this whole time. The hookshot. It's chain stretches long when we use it. Oh 
Well, I'm pretty sure this was its second appearance after uh, Link to the Past. And we have three hearts left, that's great. So the hookshot is going to be another uh, pretty useful item for getting around quickly, or at least when the environment allows it. these guys, as you might have guessed. So did I even need to? I don't think so, because the door was trying to go through as a key door, so... I didn't really have to. No way. Total quarter power again. Have to defeat any enemies, even if there was another door in the same way that we did have to do that to open. So now what? Oh yeah, there was that, uh, actually before we proceed north. Before we proceed north, there's a couple more things we need to get. And some of them are money, like this chest that we saw way back at the beginning. We can now hookshot over to it. And get to 100 rupees and probably max out the uh, the money counter, yes. But that's alright, because we really need money for uh, our stuff once we've gotten the bow. I think we can also use the hookshot to kill things from a distance, actually. Oh yeah, we can take, take these things max away from them. Oh. Are we going the right way? No, it's up on the left. And in case you were wondering what those things were, that's what we do with them. And I really could use that fairy, thank you very much. So, what you're supposed to do in this room is just hook up to move quickly and not jump like an idiot like I did the first time. And in order to have this, we can of course collect the chest. Which we do need to get because it has a small key. Alright, anything else we need from this area? Well, apparently there's a secret room that we haven't discovered yet. Oh, never mind. Not a secret room, just a room that we haven't gone into yet because we couldn't. Uh, we were missing a key that we have now, and oh boy, I forgot that these things were here. We might not be able to defeat them without the bow. I hope that's not the case. I should look it up probably, actually. But these two things are a Goma. Another uh, legacy boss brought back from the first game. And the way you're supposed to deal with them is by shooting them in their eyes, but they're not opening their eyes at all. Yeah, I don't know if we can do this without the bow. Hang on a minute. Might actually have to interrupt this. So I can go back to the village and get the bow. I think I might have goofed by coming here without that. Link's Awakening, blah blah blah... Alright, never mind. Apparently, you can kill them with the hookshot. But, in order to do that, they need to open their eyes. Which they're really, really, really not doing. Oh, there we go. So never mind, they telegraphed it. Also, I was... I had my, uh... 
thing is on the wrong keys though, which is why. And as soon as I look it up, they of course do that. I guess you need to, like, make yourself situate yourself in front of them more for them to, to provoke them. But this might take a bit longer than it would with uh, arrows, I guess. Oh, boy. Don't do that, please. Try to shoot me with a fireball so I can hurt you. Alright, one of them is down. Now for the other one. Oh, boy. So nice of them to fight you one at a time. And the other one has more room to move, so long reach, I guess. On. I'm waiting for you to not do that, but to do the thing that allows me to hurt you. There we go. Thank you very much. spawn this thing in. Also, now that we have the hookshot, we can find out what those Bowser heads are for. We can hookshot up to them. Oh boy. Why didn't you let me jump in your head? Well, this guy will fix all that. We still need another key to... Oh boy. Get rid of that thing. And uh, never mind, I guess we can't backtrack this way because this thing's in the way. We need another key, so... We need to look elsewhere. And I don't think we have the Nightmares key yet, so... We need to find the last two treasure chests in this dungeon a bit. But we need to go the roundabout way if we want to get there. left since we already took care of all of that. So up, up, and then go to the next room, so yeah. But I don't remember the chests in those rooms. Starting with this one. So all we have to do is collect them. But not only that, we also get money. So where's the nightmare ski? Because we don't have that yet, I don't think. Maybe we don't need it though? I guess maybe not. Maybe they made an exception for this stuff. I don't remember actually. We have what we need, so let me see if I can figure out where the way back to where I want it to be is. If we keep going this way, we run to where the master stealth room was. I think what I want to do is go left. Possibly go left. Probably not actually. Oh yeah. <coughs> I just remember where it is. Because I remember that this exists. 
And there's still something on the far end of this place that we have not obtained. Because we need the hookshot to do so. I hope it's... Oh, where are we in the map? We're right next to the boss room. Apparently it's a square that's not on the map. Of course this is where the magma key is. To obtain that, let's make our way back slowly to the place where we can actually reach the nightmare's room from. Oh, shoot, how well. At least that's less redundant than a piece of power. Yes, I know. The morning sun has indeed vanished, horrible night. So, yes, there's no, um. Actually, I forget what happens if we go this way. We end up in. Hang on, where are we? Can we return from. No, we cannot. Or can we? This is actually where we need to go. I just don't realize it. But now I think I was right the first time. Never mind. This is where we need to go. So let's see what they did for the boss of this dungeon. The answer is, of course, someone who's going to give us more dialogue than the others. We are the outsider. Come to wake the wind fish. I don't know if uh, if you have a lisp like that. I don't know if the S in like a sh sound would continue that. But apparently it knows how to wrap this, so it will eat us. It's it, of course, being that thing right there. The slime eel. Pretty sure you're supposed to jump over the tail, but oh, yeah, you're supposed to. What you're supposed to do here is um... hmm, kind of annoying because you need three items to. Actually, can you jump over the tail? No, you can't. Okay, never mind. Make the two items. Oops, I didn't mean to select the ocarina. Hang on. I need this, and I need this. What you do is, when it pokes its head out, yeah, you drag it out with the hookshot and you strike its heart as many times as you are able to. I don't know why its heart is in its throat, basically, but that's just how eels work, I guess. You know, in before eels actually work like that somehow. And this usually takes a while, surprisingly. Even if we do have the improved uh, attack thing. So this boss is actually pretty tough uh, if you're unprepared. But I'm not, so... Tsk, tsk. We don't seem to know what kind of island this is. I wonder what that could possibly mean. After that we got another uh, hard container and the fifth instrument of the sirens, which is the wind marimba. <laughs> An island secret, it's in the shrine. And funny that, because the next dungeon is actually more of a kind of unique, or at least the, the lead-up 
the build up I guess to it is. Us we will come to learn very soon because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do that right now. We don't get lectured by the owl, huh? Also not as a mermaid statue. Once again. I think we'll get lectured by the owl before we actually get into the sixth dungeon. But until then, let's continue our uh, crusade, I guess. Unimpeded. And see if we can finally reach the, uh, the mermaid statue. Something that we've been unable to do for a while because we needed to cross this gap, which we can only do with Hookshot. But it doesn't help if that guy gets frozen. Right there. Alright, there we go. <coughs> I forgot that the Hookshot can actually freeze certain enemies, that one being one of them, so... Uh, well, Mermaid said that one of uh, the artists who made that statue once asked her for a scale as well, so now that we have one... Go to the missing scale in the mermaid statue and watch as it does this. And find this cave with, um, with mysterious sources of pain, which also contains that thing. But first, let me see if there's anything under the skulls. Just uh, yeah, I guess it does have a few hearts. And I thought I heard something, but I guess I didn't. But for uh, getting to the end of the... Actually, for... <coughs> well, getting this far, not quite the end just yet. There's one more step. For getting this far in the trading sequence, we get the magnifying lens, which will reveal many things to us that we couldn't see before. Such as these things, which were hurting us before. So now we can see invisible creatures and such. Well, congrats to that, Mick. I should probably look up more uh, seashell locations. I only need six more to get that as well. But, but yeah, that is, you know, the level 2 sword with the red mail does make you pretty OP. We have the magnifying lens. You might recall uh, one of these. Oh, now that she has a broom, she's here. One of these houses being empty. But now that we have it, we find this. Yep, now we can see this, Sora. He must have a magnifying glass. He's not a troublemaker, he just wants to live in peace. And here comes a mouse. Well, the photographer. Sora is in the house, and he has to take a picture of that. Which will be called I Found Sora. Which Link's look, Link looks thrilled to be in, as you can see. And he can tell us something useful as well. If you go to Tarombo Shores and use a magnifying glass, we will find someone like him. And indeed, that will actually lead us to the ultimate purpose behind the trading quest. Also, there's nothing in the house, under the pots, I guess. So, we'll go ahead and do that now, because the item that we get as a result of that is pretty useful. For a very specific reason. I forget what I was going why I went into the, the menu, but... But it, I guess it doesn't matter, because... So we don't really need it. Oh yeah, let's see if we have our money maxed out, let's spend all of it on the bow. Bow and arrow set, only 980 rupees. Of course I'll get it. But I'll never come again. Except to rob you. Spoiler alert, but yeah, we know how the bow and arrows. And I think, uh, well, yeah, we do have a separate counter for the arrows, I think. Also, I was moonwalking for a bit there, I didn't notice that. 
We can moonwalk if we hold down. Uh, did we miss a photo? If you're talking about the one in the shop, I'm pretty sure uh, we can do that any time by stealing anything. And I don't really want to get it until the end of the... Uh, until the near the end. We have three photos left. One of them is that one, one of them is... I said another one, and one of them is... Um, the one with the mouse and the fisherman, which I hope I can still get. I should look this up. I do have the wiki open right there. It says always available. Did it lie? I hope it didn't lie. Because I already have all of the ones that are unavailable after a certain point. Oh well. I'll have to give that a try. But in the meantime... Let's go and put an end to the whole um, trading quest thing. Make an important choice in the process, he said. Try not to crack up while he said that. There should be a cave here in the shores, which normally appear empty, that one right there. But now that we have the magnifying glass, it has a Borea inside. It found a good item washed up on the beach, and he'll trade it to us for whatever we have in our B button, which right now is our sword, so it's not a good trade. So let's equip our shovel, which is kind of useless. Or at least not as useful as the other uh, stuff that we have. And we, it's pretty much completely non-essential. And get the boomerang. But we can... Uh, we can get the item back. If we decided that we screwed up and we traded away something essential like the magical powder, which which you actually need. Um, actually, I'm not sure. I, hmm. Like right now. Oh yeah, I think the thing is you can't trade the powder. Because you can't trade certain items, it doesn't let you. I should probably look this up too. Could try it out myself, but I'm too lazy to do that. Why do what someone else has already written about? Link Awakening. Magnifying lens. Oh yeah, there's something else we can do with the magnifying lens. Well, apparently that's also marked as the end of the trading sequence, so hang on. I think uh, something you could potentially do or think of doing is uh, trade it for magic powder. Or trade magic powder for the boomerang, but... If you do that, I don't think the guy will take it because you could just like go and make more magic powder with the witch, or you could win more magic powder at the, um, the trendy game, for example. But it doesn't say anything about that in the wiki. Just have to assume that's the case. But yeah, the boomerang, the boomerang is pretty OP. I think you'll find it's. Range, it has unlimited uses, and uh, it's also considered LP for a certain reason involving the end of the game. But now that we have this, uh, we can have it replace the sword. We can also cut through grass. Which 
makes it a lot faster at cutting grass and the sword is. So one more thing that we can do with uh, the magnifying glass is this. Remember this book? The Dark Secrets and Mysteries of Kaholand. Do we really want to read it? We can now read it. Round and round the passageways of the egg. And a series of um, directions which I just took a picture of. This book reeks of secrets. I wonder what that's about. Mm -hmm. Even though it kind of said it right in the book. So, let me see. You already finished the trading sequence. And now we have the boomerang. There's a puzzle down here, a puzzle area that we can clear now. We have the hook shot and other things. Pegasus boots and actually wait. Go this way. Oh yeah, this is called um, the signpost maze. I wonder if we can figure out why. It seems pretty inconspicuous, doesn't it? This area. At first glance. But it says to try again from the start, so let's read this sign. Let's go this way. And then go that way. And continue on. Never deviating from the directions given to us. For any reason. Falling down a hole included. Oh boy. Oh. What did I just say? I think that you actually grab that thing that you were trying to pick. And now we go up. Get out of here, we can go up. To read this sign, and then go right. And see where else this quest will lead us. Apparently in circles is the answer more than anything, but... Oh boy. They give us an easy one, I guess. So are we almost done? Because... Go this way, alright. What the fuck they put all this stuff there? It's alright, we did it. Our reward is this way. So now that we've read every side, we can find... Wart from Mario 2. Or as he calls himself, Mamu. Doesn't need to tell us that. Everyone knows. So I guess we can listen to another... Oh wait, we need 300 rupees, never mind. I guess it's too early to do this now, since we don't have that money. That's a shame, but we don't play for free. So yeah, we can learn another song from them, but... We need money for that, I guess. We better remember that we have access to that now. I don't remember if there's anything else I want to do before I continue with the plot. Because actually I'm not sure what the... I don't remember exactly what the purpose of uh, the fish song learned. <coughs> All the song we learned from the frog is... I think, actually I think we do need to learn this, the frog song. Or a plot thing, but I don't remember what the purpose of the mambo is. Uh, but for the time being, we should go to the animal village, I think. Actually, should we? No, I don't think we should. We need to get to this place right here, I think. 
but I don't remember how to get there. I guess we could go south from here. I think there's actually an extra area that we don't really need to go to at any point nearby, but that we can get some nice stuff from, but we need money to get uh, more to do stuff there, so I'm not sure if it's worth going there right now. I guess I'll find out. Damn it. So what's down these stairs? Apparently nothing. Or more, uh, more probably there are a way out of something else. Do we want to challenge the river rapids and raft? Well, proceed to the office at once. So we can get a raft ride here, but... Or a hundred rupees, yes. But, well, I would like that, but... All this guy's eager, I see. But we're dirt poor right now, so we can't really afford to do anything of that nature, but... But the rapid stride is pretty much an extra area where you can get extra rewards and such. Mostly money, but you also need to go through it I think, a couple times if you want to get all of the map unlocked. Or mapped out, at any rate. Because it's that big block of uh, great stuff that's <coughs> just above the face shrine. But speaking of the face shrine, that's where I will go now. Or not the temple proper, but because it's actually one of the more frustrating ones because of the enemies that are in it. But I will go to the area we need to go to, to... Oh boy. Well, there's the owl. To get inside the important one. Because there's two shrines. One to the north, the other to the south. First, we need to head south. To find a shocking revelation. Or we would if we were allowed to. before, but... Oh yeah, we do have the bow now. <laughs> That's kind of important, actually. But we didn't get very far because we just... Um, oh yeah, to proceed, we could just come around like I'm doing right now, but... The thing is, some of these things come to life. This area actually is supposed to be a throwback to... the Eastern... Um, Eastern Palace area from Link to the Past. Which looked kinda like this and had armors as enemies, but you pretty sure could have those with a sword in that game. Out here you need to get them out of the way with sword strikes. So that you can eventually uh, get to the face shrine. Which is right here. Which also looks like the entrance to the Eastern Palace in Link to the Past. So what lies within? More intriguing music. Also arrows. We can, uh, not, I guess we can, uh, can use more than 22 or 20 arrows right now. So let's see what lies in here. The answer is the Armos Knight. Okay, AKA the first boss from Link to the Past. And like before, we heard it with arrows. And it gets angry and red and jumps around. But this time it goes even further and breaks its helmet off to reveal eyes. But then we kill it. And get the face key. Which we need to enter the actual dungeon. Which is the one to the north, but first... Let's see what else is in here, shall we? 
There's a picture carved on the wall, but we can't see it because it's too dark in here. Well, we have some magical powder with us, so... We can fix that. And what we learn here is... To the finder, the Isle of Kaholint is but an illusion. Human monster sees Sky as seen on the lid of a sleeper's eye. Wake the dreamer, and Kaholint will vanish much like a bubble on a needle. Cast away, we should know the truth. What? Well, isn't that something? I wonder who could have seen that. As being a thing in this game. Also, where is the... that thing? But we can't get more arrows from the pot. Oh boy, you're going to tell us what we just learned. We've read the relief indeed. It does say the island is but a dream of the windfish. But no one is really sure. Just as we cannot know if a chest holds a trash until we open it. Have we... Have you heard of Schrodinger's cat? Owl. Can't tell if this is a dream until we awaken. The only one who knows for sure is the windfish, even if he's not awake, I guess. Someday we will know for sure. So it might be a dream, or it might not be. Oh shit. So now that we've learned that shocking truth, let's get the hell out of here. To where the actual dungeon is located. Or at least unlock it. Also, I'm about, I'm about to die. I would not like that. I would hate that, actually. Point of fact. Oh, right. I have the medicine. I completely forgot about that, actually. But I would like to keep it, if at all possible. Hero's life gone. got a key much like we've gotten with a couple of the other dungeons. <coughs> Which of course means we need to unlock the dungeon before it will appear. But in order to do that, we first need to find a place where that will happen. Or we'll, where we'll be able to insert a key to make something important appear. And then if we can swim. We can make it to this little pot of land over here. I'll wake that thing up. And, uh, get hurt by it, but also, uh, I guess, lure it into the water or it will disappear. Oh, I don't want the medicine to be used. So, if we continue on, I think we can hook that over to those things. Yes, we can. We will reach this place where the face is. Inserting the key will make the actual dungeon appear. Face shrine. Well, I'm not sure I want to go yet because, as I said, I've had horrible uh, lack of health. But the face shrine is actually pretty difficult. Yeah, when you consider the, the puzzling that you have to do in it and the enemies that it contains. So I'm not sure if I want to go there just yet, but. But you know what, I think that is where I will be ending the game for now. I guess I can make a save in there, just so it will remember where I am. If I can hit the buttons in the correct sequence. Alright, there we go. Also, uh, just out of curiosity. If I reload, I will still have the same health. Never mind. Even though it shows me with all hearts on the fucking file select screen. But oh well. Oh wait. I heard that percussion while uh, 
while the game was trying to close. And that looks a lot better than the other one, doesn't it? Damage. But, like always, I will be taking a quick break and then we'll be going over to livestream to continue Firefly and possibly force me to remember some of the stuff I thought I had prepared for uh, mocking about before the start of the stream, but which I failed to remember, so... So we'll be doing that. What did I have anyway? Oh yeah. Well, it was one thing. But we'll be looking at that, I guess. So, we'll be going over to livestream in a bit, but... Until then, I need to find something to soothe my throat, I guess. Thank goodness for TV shows, which means I don't have to talk that much. 